leave the on to Greg. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, following on from Jack's last point, I want to turn to community engagement from HS2 Limited, from their contractors. This committee visited my constituency last month, heard from councillors, heard from parishes, heard from landowners and farmers about the impact HS2 has on them, their lives, their ability to go about day-to-day -day life. We all stood as a committee with those landowners on Elm Tree Farm, just outside Steeple Clayton. A week after we had all stood there, the owners of that farm, by accident, discovered HS2 contractors taking an element of land that they had not paid for, starting fencing it off, even doing works at 2am under the radar. There was supposed to be a meeting on Monday about this involving myself and Buckinghamshire Council with EKFB, the contractor, and the landowners to try and find a way through this. That meeting was cancelled at the last minute, changed to today, which one has to presume anyone looking at the order paper would understand I need to be here because we've got a lot of legislation to vote on later, and equally saying no one from Buckinghamshire Council may attend that meeting. When are we going to get a grip over HS2 Limited and their contractors' attitude and behaviour towards the communities they are disrupting so badly? So, um, I am keen to work with you and Buckinghamshire Council um, to ensure that the matters which impact uh, are mitigated. I have said before that when you build a new railway there will always be some impact, um, but the key is minimising it and sort of making community engagement a better place. I'm grateful to you um, for um, setting up the joint meeting you and I had with HS2, with Buckinghamshire Council and with East West Rail, primarily to discuss roads, but we touched on some of the other matters as well. I felt that that was a sort of positive meeting in terms of let's be open, frank, work together. There are matters where there are disputes and, and different um, perspectives in terms of rights, etc. Uh, I think the Elm Tree Farm is part of the Dunnells Wood um, uh, area. So I think originally the HS2 sort of environmental uh, statement identified the whole of Dunnells Wood as being for taking. In fact, actually, it's not required as much now. But obviously there have been issues you've raised and we'll look into it and make sure uh, that we can demonstrate that those rights exist um, and also that there's been proper consultation uh, with um, the owners of, of Elm Tree uh, Farm. Um, if there is a specific in terms of people should not be invited to a meeting after you and I have just had a meeting with all of those principals involved, then that would strike me as very odd. Uh, I'll happily look into that and inquire why that would be the case. I, I'm grateful for that answer. I am grateful from a constituency perspective of the time that you have put into trying to help resolve these matters. But on the, the more macro level, we're still in a position years into the start of construction and land take and build that we're still raising these issues and it's not just my constituency it's the whole line of route of phase one talking to colleagues of multiple parties there are Labour MPs as well as Conservative MPs constituencies affected in this way what has gone wrong what 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 can we identify, particularly as you know, the government seems set on, at some point, building the rest of this thing, against my advice, but the government's set on building it. How can you ensure that the lessons are genuinely learnt from the nightmare that we've had in Buckinghamshire and the nightmare they've had in Hillingdon and in Oxfordshire and Northamptonshire and Warwickshire isn't transferred straight into the building of future phases? Yeah, look, it's, it's essential. I mean, putting it into perspective, HS2 is the largest land acquisition uh, this country has made since the Second World War. On phase one, we have 350 active sites. We're at peak build. Uh, and it's, as you know, because of the impact on your constituency, it's being delivered. And it does come uh, with consequences. And I absolutely understand that. Um, and we do look at it with interest. So I'll give you an example. I went up to your, your neighbour, 
uh, Andrea Ledsom's constituency, uh, and she took us to three cases uh, where I just felt that more should have been done. We had one particular case where um, there was some legal assurance sought as to uh, future rights of way, uh, and between HS2's lawyer and the, the individual's lawyer who HS2 are paying for, um, they had come up with a document like that. And I was a lawyer myself, was looking through it because I could see exactly what they needed. And it struck me that one page of annex I eventually found would have done the job. Um, so since then, I asked for those lawyers to actually work with more speed and simplicity. Uh, and they have actually now turned, turned that around. But it shouldn't be for me to actually effectively almost intermediate. Um, we obviously have the uh, commissioners who are in place. But one thing I want to do with HS2 and they're aware is look at all of their outstanding matters uh, when it comes to disputes on phase one uh, and take a view. That may be a commercial view because it may be that the amount we're arguing about is being dwarfed by the fees. So I'm all about doing that because I want to reduce that list so that we've got matters closed and they can just get on and build the railway and everyone has that assurance. So I'll come back to you on the specific uh, matter with regard to Elm Tree Farm. Uh, I will seek to demonstrate that those rights exist uh, and also there the consultation but if that's not been the case, then I will absolutely sort of open that up, and I would therefore be very happy to meet you and your constituents to discuss it, if that is the case. I'm grateful. You referenced the two commissioners, the Residence Commissioner and the Construction yeah. Commissioner, in that. Both have visited my patch. I've met with them. Both Lord Jackson and Sir Mark Worthington have been on the ground. They've listened. They have been sympathetic to everything I have raised with them. I have no doubt they are doing a good job in bringing the matters I have raised with them and no doubt others have raised with them to the attention of HS2 Limited and the Department for Transport. But do they have enough teeth? Do those two roles have the genuine ability to change things within HS2 Limited? Because again, I've raised things with them countless times. I'm absolutely confident they've done a good job in ensuring what I've raised with them has been heard by the government, by HS2 Limited, by the contractors, but we keep going round in a circle and the same issues keep happening again. Do, do we need to beef up the role of those two commissioner roles? Well, I've met both those commissioners and they've, they've certainly not said to me that they, they lack the teeth to be able to do the job that they, they need to do. Uh, but also, I think that's when it's duty bound on you and you do this as a, as a great constituency MP representing your constituents and me uh, to actually then deliver the fixes as well. So it's in addition to those two commissioners. Um, and as I say, I'm absolutely committed to ensuring that these issues that have just become sort of, you know, quite knotty and difficult, have taken far too long, and then also sometimes difficulties can arise in terms of uh, the engagement, um, that we deal with them. Uh, and we deal with them swiftly because they end up taking quite a lot of my time up, um, understandably so. Um, and that's another reason why I want to be able to, to, to deal with it. And in terms of lessons learned, absolutely. So we've obviously got the land acquisition on phase 2A, and we move, which has got quite a lot of farming uh, issues into it, uh, and then we'll move into phase 2B, and Mr Morris is on the bill committee where those petitions that give the powers uh, are being, being dealt with right now. Um, we fully expect the lessons learned, not just on HS2 as well, but also when we look at the rest of the build of East-West Rail as well. Funnily enough, you know, Minister, I could talk about this all day, so mindful of time, I will now move on to East-West Rail. Hmm. Uh, but there is a question that, that crosses both, as you've just said, the lessons learned equally yeah. apply to any new railway being built. The next phase of East-West Rail is different to the first phase of East-West Rail, which the section running from Oxford to Milton Keynes is bringing an old railway back to life beyond through Bedford to Cambridge is a brand new railway. How confident are you that the, the lessons learnt from HS2 are being applied to the East West Rail Company and the East West Rail Alliance as they embark on a project that is far more akin to HS2 than the first phase has been? Yes, I mean, you're absolutely right. The, the first phase is sort of a question of restoring railway, um, which takes you from Oxford uh, to Bletchley, uh, the second phase going from Bletchley uh, to Bedford is an existing line already, albeit it will require upgrades. And then the third phase is brand new railway that goes from Bedford uh, through to Cambridge. So the route announcement uh, took place, uh, was held or delivered on the 26th of May. 
Uh, that tells um, the public where we expect the route to go, albeit there's a consultation now for that. Uh, the route will go into Cambridge from the south. Uh, there will be new stations for Thamesford, Camborne, and a Cambridge South station, which is being built right now. Uh, I was there a few weeks ago. It's, it takes workforce into the biomedical campus in Cambridge. Actually, that's the real sell for this railway. It's a great connection between Oxford and Cambridge, but what it delivers, those two um, academic cities uh, that are really booming, uh, is a workforce that they need in order to, to continue to grow and compete with uh, Boston and, and, and other university cities around the world. Um, so as part of that, the success has got to be learning lessons. There will be some impact. Bedford in particular, we've decided to, to put a six-track process in place because that allows... Um, what is actually one of the most congested uh, parts of the existing rail network to be dealt with as well. And that will have some disruption on, on those that have houses in the Poets area in Bedford. Uh, but the prize is, is fantastic, particularly for Bedford as well, because the idea is to move Bedford St John's station so it's actually nearer the hospital. Um, so it not only delivers more infrastructure, it actually allows people to access uh, p better public services as well. So I'm really excited about the project. Um, I could talk for ages about it, you probably won't want me to, but um, I'm keen that everyone is enthusiastic about it and I know that that's more likely to occur if the lessons can be learned from previous railways or uh, applied to this one. One of those lessons is that that final phase of East-West Rail, uh, much like most of phase one of HS2, goes through agricultural land. How many people working on the project understand farming? Well, certainly those that I've met on East West Rail do. They've been working in the in the community. When I went over to Winslow and met them all, they seem to demonstrate great great knowledge of the, the surrounds. Um, I, I I need to write back to you and just sort of explain sort of what the consultation has actually been with the NFU and farming community in, in general, um, given it's East West Rail that we'll be having those conversations. Grateful for that clarity because there is a feeling on the ground, both in existing build areas and a fear for future build areas that when it comes to the impact on soil health for example when you have to displace a lot of soil for a long time and maintaining that for arable farmers yeah, the, the, the people moving it around just don't understand what farmers actually need and when farmers raise those issues with them you get a bit of a, a blank face and it'll all be alright so if you can ensure that people that understand agriculture that understand farming are engaged in this project and it's not all being done from desktops in metropolitan areas. It was, that, that's to say, certainly when I met the team in your constituency, that, you know, they were very much in the heart of your constituency, not uh, working from a sort of desk in London or another city. So I'd fully expect they would be able to embrace that, but I'll, I'll write back to you to give you that assurance. And I met, and I know you have, recently with the NFU, um, due to hold a sit-down meeting with them to ensure that um, the lessons learnt are being put in place for other parts of, of HS2 with regard to farming uh, and also uh, East-West Rail as well.